We have finally completed the N2 USD reserve smart contract, which means that now I can back my N2 USD stable coin against the two collateral types that we talked about, the USDT and the unstable collateral Ethereum. Here's the tricky part. If you remember on the first video, we mentioned that we have to obtain the price of both collaterals, right? The stable and the unstable. And we need to determine how much collateral in the form of tokens do we need to deposit into the resource mark contract, which means that I have to obtain the value in real time and determine the amount that we need to have in the collateral in the vault to back our stable coin. And that's fine because I can grab my calculator and get the, the collateral that we need. And we just go ahead and divide that by the token price. And that will give us the amount of tokens that we need to deposit onto the vault. That's fine. That's not a problem. However, here's the problem the token price will fluctuate, specifically the unstable collateral, which means I have to obtain all the time. This will happen in real time. We need to obtain the price of both collaterals, the unstable and the stable, and we need to be able to provide that onto the smart contract. In this case, it's the governance smart contract, the smart contract that is going to dictate the algorithmic aspect of the token. It's going to either burn tokens, mint tokens, but in essence, all it's doing, it's making sure that the value of the stable coin remains pegged to the US dollar. Okay, so with that said, I have to feed onto the governance smart contract the real time price of the token. So then the smart contract can determine if it needs to rebalance the peg or not. If the price of the collateral went down, the governance smart contract needs to know how much it changed by obtaining the current or the latest price of that token and doing the formula that is going to either burn or mint excess tokens to balance the peg back up. Speaking of that, we have to work with data feeds from Chainlink, okay? So what we're going to be doing in this video is basically step one of the governance my contract. We are going to be obtaining in real time from Chainlink VRF the values of the collateral that we will hold in the reserve smart contract, which means that I have to bring that value inside the smart contract, which means that I have to obtain the data in the blockchain and feed my smart contract with that data. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video, we are going to be integrating the first part of the governance smart contract. What I'm going to do, I am going to build a price oracle smart contract. It is not really a price oracle. What is just going to do, it's going to fetch the price from the chaining data feeds and we will inject that into the smart contract and save that value. So then we can pass the value onto the governor's smart contract. When the time comes to rebalance the peg, the governor's smart contract is going to do that against the price of the unstable collateral based on what it has stored or what Chainlink has provided to the governor's smart contract. So what we're doing, we are building a smart contract that will be lift and use into the governance smart contract. The smart contract is going to get us the price. You're going to see this on the video. It's going to get us the price of Bitcoin. It's going to get us the price of Ethereum, Matic, all the, the unstable collaterals that we have available. We are going to be able to obtain those prices. And not only that, but we are going to be injecting those values, those numbers onto the smart contract. So then we can do whatever we want to do with that number, right? Because we need to obtain against what value am I going to be doing the math to bring the peg back up, bring back the stable token price. With that said, I have to explain to you something that we have to do. It's not just grabbing the token value and doing the math because that's not how EVM works, okay? I cannot just feed a decimal value because that's not how Ethereum works does its math. We have to convert the values onto way, which is the measurement in Ethereum that we use to convert decimals or calculate decimals, right? We're going to be using way because it's more precise than decimal. When Chainlink gives me the price fee for most of the tokens in the data feeds, we are going to be obtaining 
eight decimals, which those numbers we have to convert onto way because I cannot just feed the eight decimals. Let's take the price of Ethereum. That means that if I don't convert that from eight decimals onto way, we're just going to get a fraction of a cent or something like that. It's not going to be the actual value of Ethereum. So we have to convert that onto way and we're going to be doing that on the fly. But in a nutshell, do you want to know how to convert into way? Just add 18 zeros to every decimal. One, 18 zeros. That's way. Number one, you want to convert one to way is one, 18 zeros. What we're going to do, we're going to build that smart contract. We are going to be able to obtain the data feed prices, bunch of tokens, because what I'm going to do, I am going to do a function that is going to allow me to change the data feed smart contract. Again, we are just talking to a smart contract. Like any other interaction on the blockchain, we are going to be talking to the aggregator interface. That's the chain link interface that is going to give us that access into the data feed so that we can inject those values onto the governance smart contract. Without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump. Let's build the smart contract. Let's do it very quick and let's continue this party on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I am going to head into the Shaming and Data Feed site, and we are going to get familiar with the tokens and how we are going to associate the smart contract to the Data Feed smart contract. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to obtain the Data Feeds on Chainlink, and we are going to identify the Ethereum Data Feed smart contract okay that is very important because with that we can make calls into the data feed at chain link and get those values on to our smart contract okay so that's the first thing that we need to do with that said let me head on to chain link and let's take a look at that okay let's go so once we are in the site click on docs onto the developer section we get on docs the first section that we are going to see right away is going to be the data feeds okay click on price feeds once we get into the price feeds we want to take a look at the price feed addresses and those are the addresses that i need to invoke in my smart contract in this case the aggregator interface is going to make those calls to those price feeds addresses the interface the aggregator interface is basically that link that will allow us to talk to the functions that will provide us those values okay so we're going to be working um, with polygon in this case again you can use Ethereum, you can use binance smart chain you can use all of the available blockchains or mainnets as as you wish okay so in this case i'm going to go over matic and you can see right here this is the mainnet data feed smart contracts okay so let's say i want to get the price avax we can get the price of the balancer we can get all the tokens obviously bitcoin we can get the price of bitcoin and this gives you the price feed based on the pair so in this case if you want to get the price bitcoin against the ethereum token so that will give you the value in eth okay in this case we want to take a look at the price of eth against the us dollar because we're going to be building that stable coin okay so in that case what i need to go and find here will be the ethereum to usd and there you go this is the e to usd but this is productions or this is the main net so what we want to work with is going to be the test net but again it's going to be the same okay so in this case if i hover over the right corner right here upper right corner you're going to see mumbai that's our test net and this is the smart contract that i need to work with okay we are going to interface ourselves into the smart contract and we will obtain the values of the token price we're going to be obtaining the token price values okay now what i need to do now i am going to be showing you the aggregator v3 interface if you want to learn how the aggregator v3 interface works you head over the developer section on documentation okay and we go back into the data feeds we go under the price feeds there we go okay so how can we get that? So we hover over price feeds, click on learn how to read answers from data feeds, okay? So in this case, this is a sample smart contract that they have, so then you can follow it and you will be able to do this same test scenario or tutorial right here, and you should be able to obtain the value. We're gonna be doing slightly different than what Shanelink is offering, because in our case, we need to be able to grab the values and export the values onto the governance smart contract, okay? But you can see right here, as, as I'm talking about the aggregator interface, we have the aggregator v3 interface. 
which basically maps to data feed. They're, they're just declaring this interface to be the data feed. And then from there, I am going to be passing that function inside the function, inside basically the interface. Those, this is basically the interface that we are going to be talking to. I am going to be passing the address of the data feed that we want to obtain the values for. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be the Ethereum to USD. So let me show you how can we do this smart contract real quick. We're going to be doing this price Oracle test smart contract that will allow me to test multiple aggregator interfaces and see different prices. And we can make the math and we can do the, the calculation and convert that to, you know, to way. Okay, let's start obviously by initializing the contract okay and now we have to import the aggregator v3 interface from the shanley smart contracts okay so shanley has a repo that we can talk to the repo and we can obtain the aggregator v3 interface that way and import that onto our smart contract okay cool so what i'm going to do now i am going to be importing the chainlink aggregator v3 interface and this is the full path it's going to be at chainlink contract source uh, v6 v v06 interfaces aggregator v3 interface cool now because i have to work with uh safe math i have to be dealing a little bit with safe math so we can do the conversion from the eight decimals let's convert to the full way value okay so i am going to be using safe math as well so let's go ahead and import that boom we have imported the safe math now what i'm going to do i'm going to initialize the contract by typing contract and we're going to say price oracle let's just call this price oracle Okay, so the first thing I am going to be declaring here, I'm going to be using safe maths, using safe math for UINT256. And we have declared that. Beautiful. Now we are effectively going to invoke the aggregator v3 interface. So what we're going to do, we're going to call aggregator v3 interface, and we are going to declare this private. Okay, this will be used internally. Okay. And we can call this price oracle, you know, price oracle. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we have declared that. Now the next thing that we have to declare, we are going to be declaring a public variable that is going to be called unstable collateral price. Okay, so this is where I am going to be storing the price of the unstable token that I need to obtain the price for. Okay, but this will be the price formatted in way. Okay, you're gonna see this is very cool. Okay, and now I have to declare the address variable that will allow me to switch between different currencies. So if you want to change and start getting the price for Bitcoin, then we are going to just, you know, update the address and boom, we should be talking to the data feed for Bitcoin. We want to get the price for any other asset. We just need to update that address. It's going to be more flexible than just hard coding the particular address that we need to work with and remember that's not good in production if you're going to be hard coding addresses if they decide to change the address your smart contract is no longer valid so you want to make sure that you set your variables that you can update those variables okay if they are talking to something that is out of your control obviously okay so in this case we're going to call this address okay we declare this address public so let's talk data feed oops I'm going to say here data feed awesome okay so we're good so far now what's next now what we need to do is we are going to create a function that is going to update the data feed address so in case we want to change and start getting a different token price we can do it okay function set data feed address okay and we are going to be passing address and we're going to call this contract address. Okay. Just call that contract address. And because this is just a test uh, smart contract, I, I am not going to put any security because again, we're just going to see how can we pull that data from Chainlink. Okay. We're not, we're not, this is not the actual governance smart contract. This it's actually what we will implement in the governance smart contract. Okay. So external. Okay. So what we need to do first, we are going to say data feed and you're going to say this and we're going to update that to whatever value we are going to be passing externally. And now we are going to then declare the price oracle. Remember, when we are making calls to the interface, this is what I'm going to be invoking. This is the interface that we are importing. Then I am labeling that to be price oracle. 
what now I need to do, I'm going to say price Oracle, right? And we are going to be passing the new aggregator interface, which is going to be aggregator interface and the value in this case, data feed. Okay. So let me explain to you what's, what's happening right now. So when we call this function, we are going to be passing this contract address. Okay. So this contract address will be used to update the value that is public of data feed. Okay. What will this do? And again, I don't need to do that. I could get away with just updating the data feed itself, but we want to make sure that we see what's what the smart contract is uh, tied to the aggregator interface. So in case I need to change it, I need to know what's the contract address that was that was there before, right? So this is how we're going to be doing it. So we're going to be updating this value. And then what I'm going to do after I update this value, right? We are now going to be updating the price Oracle interface. Or in this case, the aggregator V3 interface to be the new smart contract address because we're saving it onto the data feed and we're passing it in the aggregator V3 interface. Okay. Beautiful. So we're done with this function. It's very straightforward. Okay. What I want to show you is the following. Let's do the following. I am going to be saving this smart contract because I want to show you the aggregator interface itself. What, how does that look? So if I go and control S and no errors, everything looks good. Let me show you something. I am going to head over the files, head over the dependencies. We're going to expand chain link contract source v6 interfaces and aggregator v3. So check this out. So what will happen is the following. And I saw that the address that we will obtain the values for, it's not going to be UINT. It's going to be set as the integer 256. So we have to update this value. And I went, I came across that when I first started working with data feeds that it's being sent as an integer, which, which is fine. But in our case, we want to be able to convert to UINT256 because I will be manipulating those values and passing those values onto other functions that will be also set as UINT256. Again, you can get away with that. So when you initialize this by default, it, it, and it's not going to work. Let me tell you, when you try to do this and you forgot about this section, Again, we're going into the aggregator V3 interface. So when you go into your dependencies, you're going to see that it's going to error out because it's going to say, well, UINT256 cannot be converted. INT256 to uh, UINT256, you cannot convert or you cannot you know, swap those values. So what I ended up doing is just converting this right here as UINT256. Again, it works. So what I need to do now, let me show you back. I am going to not here. I'm going to go back into the price Oracle. I want to make sure that I can update the price. And again, you're going to see it. So make sure that if you run into the error, once we attempt to do this here, you have to go into the dependencies, right? You go back into your uh, workspace, NPM, chain link, and then go to the aggregator V3 interface. Okay. Make sure that keep that in mind. So once you click the aggregator V3 interface, you should be able to see a value that is set as integer uh, and, and not UINT. So make sure that you change that. Okay. And obviously once you change this, you just control S and, and it should compile. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go back because we have a lot. Okay. So now once we get this here, I want to show you another thing that we need to take a look at the chain link. And by the way, the aggregator V3 interface is the chain link interface. It's the chain link aggregator V3 interface that is going to give us those values. Here's the thing. How are we going to obtain this particular value in our smart contract? Remember, this is going to return those values, but it's going to return the entire thing. It's not going to just return this. It's going to return the round ID and the last time that was answered. So those are answers that Chainlink records as the last time they updated the price of the token. Okay. So this is, those are all values that we will see. However, the only value that we're interested in is in the answer. And this is where we're going to be working with a tuple. So with a tuple, I can be specific on what I want to grab from the return. In this case, we have five values that we are going to be obtaining as the return, but I only need this second value, which means in the tuple, I am going to be specifying which value I want and the rest, I'm just going to ignore that. And that will allow us to take out a single value from this return. Okay. So let me show you how that works. Okay. 
I, I know you have an idea, but I want to show you what the tuple means when we start working with a particular value that we want to get from the return. We Remember, we don't want to get all the five values out. We only need the price. Okay, That's all we need. Okay, We want to build another function that is going to uh, store the price of the token. This is very important. Okay, Let's check this out. This is going to be called collateral price to way because we're going to be converting this to way okay say external and we are just going to call this beautiful okay check this out i don't please pay attention to this because it's very tricky at the beginning to understand but then once you get the idea that's it game over you're a winner okay i have to declare or have to build a tuple in which Again, we mentioned that we have five different returns. See, we have five returns. We are not returning just one value. We are returning five values. I only need to obtain the second value. I don't care about the other values. The only value that I need is the second value. Okay? So, with that said, I still have to declare that I will be receiving not just a one value, but five, but I only want to obtain the second value. Check this out. First value, second value, third value, fourth value, and fifth value. How many commas do we have? We have four commas, okay? The last value doesn't need a comma because it's the last value, okay? How do we extract as a tuple? Okay, check this out. Go back. We are going to be opening that in a parenthesis. First, first value. The second value is the one that we need, UINT256, and we will say price. That, that's the declaration for that second value. Comma, do I need the third value? No. Do I need the fourth value? No. One comma. And that's how you extract a single value out of a return that has multiple values. We are extracting the second value, okay? You got it? Let me know in the comments if you didn't know that, but now you do, okay? Equals to what? Now that we know that we are going to be obtaining five values, but we are only declaring the second one. Remember, we saw that on the aggregator interface called the price oracle because we are already passing the aggregator interface, okay? Check this out. Price oracle and dot what remember this is calling the interface because this has been stored here okay this is the value of price oracle which is the interface with the contract to get those values price oracle dot what let's go back to the interface latest round data and that's what we are going to be calling copy let's go back and paste there you go awesome now okay Check this out. Now we want to convert that value into way. And we mentioned, we can go back to Chainlink. We're gonna go back to Chainlink and we're almost done here. Show more details. And you can see here that there are certain parameters that are already uh, sent in 18 decimals, but the one that we are going to be working with is gonna be eight. And by the way, I can show you. Let's go to Polygon Matic. Let's go to Mumbai. We got only eight decimals, which means that I have to grab that and multiply that by adding 10 extra zeros. We have eight, so we have to convert this into a way. We just need to add 10 extra zeros and that will be 18. So let me show you how this is done, okay? So now that we obtained the price because it has been declared inside the tuple, now I can say UINT final price, let's just call this final price, and we are effectively multiplying price multiply, remember we're using safe math, against what? 1E10, okay? This will return us the final price. But here's the thing, I don't actually need to declare this to be final price. I can declare this to be the unstable collateral price and we should be able to see this value publicly, okay? So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do this and boom, we have effectively updated the collateral, stable collateral price to be whatever we obtain from the call from Chainlink multiplied by 1E10, okay? With that said, now we should be able to run this, okay? 
But first, I want to do the following. I want to show you the price that we obtained from Chainlink. And when we, sh when we run this, what's the price that we are going to see once we update on stable collaterals? Let me show you one last function that we're going to be doing. And this is it. This is done. Remember, this is what we're going to be doing in the governance smart contract. Okay. And it's very simple, actually. What we need to do, we are going to copy this. Okay. I am going to be copying this. And instead of me converting this to way, we are just going to call this to be a view. And the only thing that I need to be able to display is going to be the, this price. Okay. So let's call this raw collateral price. Okay. And we are going to obviously say that it's returning because it's going to return as view. This value is going to be UINT256 returns. Okay. And now all I need to do, I can remove this. I am going to say return price. Boom. That's it. That will show us the price, which is the raw collateral price. And we should be able to see the price converted on two way. Okay. So let's control S and that's, that's it. This is the literally the, the contract to get the price feeds from Chainlink. Okay. So cool. Awesome. So let's go ahead and compile. Let's compile successfully and let's go back. And remember, we're working with Mumbai. So I have to now copy the address and call the function and update the smart contract to use that address. And then we can change the address. We can use something else. It's going to be very cool. Okay. So let's uh, give it a shot. I'm going to hit the price oracle. Let's deploy and let's wait for confirmation. Okay. Boom. And we have the smart contract deployed. Awesome. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do in the smart contract is that we have to provide the contract, the data feed contract that we're going to be using the address. Okay. So in this case, we are working with a testnet and I, I mentioned that I was working with Mumbai. No, I'm working with Gorley, but it works with other testnets. Okay. So what we need to do now, we are going to be obtaining the uh, Ethereum to USD. So you can see here, I'm on the Gorley testnet and let me just grab this valley right here. We're going to copy that address. And let's go to our smart contract and we are going to update the data feed address. Okay. We're going to hit here. We should get the prompt and let's go ahead and paste and wait for the confirmation. Boom. We got the confirmation. So now let me take a look at the data feed and see what the smart contract is. Beautiful. That's the smart contract that we just uh, applied. Now let's go ahead and find the raw value that Chainlink is going to give us. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. and that is the price of Ethereum right now. If we go into Chainlink, and there you go. So it's basically giving us uh, 1729. So it probably is rounded. And yeah, sure enough. So it's 1729. Okay, awesome. So this is basically the price of Ethereum right now. And we mentioned that it's eight decimals. So all we need to do now is that we need to multiply that by 1E10. And that should give us again so eight decimals it's not after the full the dollar is where we need to count after the decimal okay so in this case it's eight so in this case if we can count one two three four five six seven eight we just need to add 10 more zeros and that will be the full value and way okay make sure that you don't get confused because it's not counting the whole number it's counting after the dot which is thousand seven hundred and twenty eight dot and then the cents. So we are basically adding eight, uh, 10 zeros to the eight. We are already obtaining eight. We just need to add 10 extra zeros. Okay. So what we need to do, we're just going to call our beautiful function that we just coded. By the way, I'm going to be calling this before that you can see there's nothing here. So now let's get the update and let's convert that to a, we're going to confirm. Once that's done, we should be able to check and we'll get the value in a way. Boom. It's done. Let's see. Look at that. Now, if I copy this value and let's just go online and we can say way to ETH right here, we're going to paste this entire value and guess what? The full value in Ether. So we have the right amount in Ether has been converted onto way. So we have effectively converted from ETH to way using our beautiful formula right here. And we now know that we are obtaining those values. If you want to change to another data feed, you just need to update this address right here. So let's grab the Bitcoin value. Okay. So let's 
get that smart contract and data feeds, price feeds, addresses, and let's go onto the Gorley testnet and let's grab BTC to USD. Let's copy this address. Let's go back to our smart contract and let's update that value right here. And we're just going to update now to use a different address. I'm going to press here. We're going to confirm we're waiting. Then we'll check the data feed. We'll make sure that we have the new value, the new address, and then we'll check the raw collateral price and we should be obtaining the value of Bitcoin. Now let's say the data feed. Awesome. This is uh, the address of Bitcoin to USD. Now let's take a look at the collateral price. Yeah, ha, ha. here we go. We got the price of Bitcoin, which is 26,000. But guess what? We haven't updated the unstable collateral price to convert this value to way. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab collateral to a uh, price. Let's convert that to way. We'll wait for that and then we'll hit this once again. Boom, we got the confirmation. Now let's take a look here. There you go. Let's grab the value once again. We, remember, we're grabbing the value convert it onto way and let's go to that website and let's see if uh, we're getting the price of bitcoin there you go twenty six thousand eight hundred and sixty eight point thirteen and so forth there you have it we are ready to build the governance mark contract get ready fasten your seat belts it's going to be a rough ride but we'll make it happen you saw it we obtained the values we injected those values to our smart contract. We added a little bit of math. We got the price converted into a, and we are ready. And I mean, we are 100% ready to get us into the governance smart contract. So the next video, it's the video. It's the video where we are going to be building that algorithmic stable coin formula that will make sure that we rebalance the token price. And we're going to be doing two scenarios. First scenario, we are going to be burning the N2 USD reserve and bringing back the peg. And the second scenario, we are going to be providing the second collateral, our own utility token. If we use our own utility token, we can control a bit more the algorithmic aspect of the stable coin. All right. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this amazing tutorial. And if you do, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.